the yes. Damn. Damn. We did it. We did a show. We did a show. Damn. We made the song at the end. That was great. It was like very like kind of okay. bittersweet. Like, oh, yeah. What no, time we're leaving now? Uh, that, is, that is the brainchild of one Justin Robert Young and our talented friend Mike TV. Who's, who's going to be on the show next live. week? Uh, what's that? He's going to be on the show next week. Oh, hells yeah. No, he's super talented. Uh, Justin had the idea to sort of end the show on, on a lullaby note. And, yeah, no, uh, I like it. It's like, uh, it's like yeah. we made a journey. Well, what's funny is uh, we had a lullaby and then we went independent. We had to get a new lullaby because we had a new show. <laughs> Uh, I, I think the yes man is having some uh, 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 failures. Here. Oh no! Oh. I mean, I, I could. Yeah. Oh no, guys! Uh, Wait. Uh, yes. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> hey, oh, there we go. Hey, yes, man. Yes, How man. are you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Are, are you Are you feeling okay? Uh... Yeah. You just got a little. We're all, we're a little behind today. The, the, our sound yeah. board, Everyone's a little late on the cues. I mean, well, hold on. Wait. Uh, yes, man. Normally, you're very quick on the trigger, and you're normally sharper than this. Wait. Are are you? Yes, man. Are you high? <laughs> it's too. <laughs> I think we got our answer on that. One. <laughs> uh. We're having fun, uh, buddies. Yeah. <laughs> We're buddies. Yay! You know that 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 staticky thing in the, the end of the game? Yeah. I think it's the adapter. I think it's the phone adapter. That's what it was. That's the channel. Design. Oh, got it. I got might it. have to get another one of these things. Well, okay. So officially, the show's over at this point. We're still hanging out live. Uh, Andrew, how 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 much gas you got in the tank? Uh, we usually hang around for a, a little bit here, but I wouldn't want to obligate. I'll hang you out. I don't think I could do like a full another program with. Oh you. no, you don't have to be but funny I, or nothing. No, oh, God, I, I, I yeah, just yeah. chill. This yeah. is usually where we just end up trying to show our friends this, this, Auntie Donna this, videos. This is like the post coital uh, cuddling of the show. Yes, we're just it, kind it of definitely is. We're doing pillow talk with the audience. Sure. All right, it's part where right. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to yeah. grab a beer. Would you Would you like a, a shiner light? Yeah, that'd be nice. Okay, all right, BRB. I'll be right back. Or, or if you uh, like whiskey, I just got a bottle from a friend that came back from Scotland. Shit, son. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll take, I'll take a, I'll take a shiner. There you go. Uh, Justin, since Brian's leaving, you want to bond? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's, let's bond. Let's yeah. talk about shit that Brian hey, doesn't you, like. Hey, thanks for. Uh, uh, I don't want to go into it too much, but, uh, but thanks for talking to uh, me the last couple of days. You and you and Brian have been a big, big, nice boost of confidence in my life. There I is no one that. better to call than Brian and Justin if you've ever been separated from. Uh... From a <laughs> yeah. from unemployment situation because it's like our favorite thing to talk about. Like it's it's like something they will do it well, if you I, haven't. I been. think I'll get there because right now it's still fresh enough. I'm like I'm not quite sure how to talk about all of it, so sure. I'm just gonna you know. But uh, but uh, you know, I, I think it's I think good stuff's in the works. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, I, I I think Sky is the limit for uh you kind of carving your own niche. Because to be totally honest with you, uh, the audience that you built there, I don't know how much. The, the the platform uh, chipped in. Uh, I think that there was a there was a lot of you, and and that was that was it. <laughs> like, like you basically did your job, uh, uh, and and there was not a whole lot of pipeline from like uh, uh, their their stuff because you you wind up doing something very different, and and I don't think that that is in that natural wheelhouse over there. Yeah, I would. It would be. It would be interesting. To, I'd, I'd like to see a, an actual pie chart of how many people. And I have no. And there were there were a lot of cool new people that came over from the blaze, and I'm glad they're there. Uh, yeah. And, and hopefully they'll come on with me to the next thing. I'm 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 there. Like I got a lot of a neat new fans. But I'm curious as to what the breakdown would be between like people that were fans of Reason Work um, versus uh, various other projects, or just folks that have come over from you guys' program. Because there's a significant fo amount that came over from you too. Yeah, that's the other thing is that I would I would suspect. That despite our the, the the disparate number of audience between like me and let's just pick out of a hat Steven Crowder, that <laughs> I probably sent you more listeners than he did. Despite yeah. the fact that he has probably exponentially not probably does exponentially larger audience than I have, and yet I think that like because your program was closer to... And yet, if we were making a Venn diagram of, of Heaton listeners, they probably more significantly overlap with you than with Steven Crowder. Yes, I suspect you're correct about that. Yeah, and, and I think that that's, that is just indicative of the fact that, like, there is a certain kind of political program, and then there's people like me and you that are making their programs as an alternative to that kind of program, yeah. which is, like, 
identify a thing. Are you upset about it? Or could you possibly be upset about it? <laughs> uh, dedicate an entire uh, uh, thing to do. Uh, and then, and this is really what's happened over the last decade or so. Then also uh, take keywords and look them up on Wikipedia. Uh, find poorly researched examples of why this actually has to do with some other thing. Uh, uh, pretend like you've done a bunch of scholarly research on it, put it in a YouTube video, and uh, congratulations. Now not only are you outraged, but your moral uh, freakout is justified by decades worth of uh, history and injustice. Yeah. But bang, boom. Yeah, uh, I'll, and, I'll say and, that like this is a this is a observation of the entire media landscape and no one in particular but the entire media landscape there it's it's easier uh to to do a program uh about getting mad about stuff than it is to read policy papers Re reading policy papers takes a lot more time it's a lot easier to find isolated examples of, of somebody being a dick particularly if they're on a different team than you uh, I see a lot of that. Uh, I, like, I look at the media landscape right now, and one of the things I really enjoy about your program, Justin, is I, so much of the media landscape is armies of straw men fighting each other. And, and you're, not, you're not doing that, and I wasn't doing that. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, there's, well, there's that, a that, lot of that. That's the funniest thing, thing is that you actually read shit. Like, <laughs> but pretty much, like I'm, uh, I am the political example of, uh, or, or equivalent of just somebody who watches people fight in a parking lot, uh, and instead of saying, like, yeah, go one person fighting or go another person fighting. I'm like, yo, he got punched in the face. <laughs> well, no, and, actually, you know what? I'll say, reason, what, what, I really, what I really enjoy about your program, Justin, I, I honestly think you're the best at it, is like, like you can broadly break down political conversations into five different camps, right? There's like philosophy and values. Are we are we talking about utilitarianism? Are we talking about deontology? You know, where does life begin? That kind of stuff. So abstract, you know, value conversations, right? There's policy conversations of, okay, we're gonna do the minimum wage. How, what's that gonna do? Is it gonna work well? All that kind of stuff, right? There's, um, there's I'm gonna call it horse trading, which is the, like the, the who's doing well in the polls, who's, who's going to, who's wait, gonna- wait, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you here. It's horse racing. You, you you always I was you're the horse, horse trading. guy. Is it, is it, it's not horse trading. It's horse, horse racing. What's horse, horse trading? trading? Horse trading is congressional. Like, all right, if you take on this subsidy, oh. then it, that benefit. Okay. Horse racing is 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 the thing. All right, that horse I racing. Do, which, but see, like, no, but this is this is my my point. Though is I feel like you you see the the art of politics, and it's this yeah. fascinating thing where you simultaneously disdain everyone in it as an actor. <laughs> but you really enjoy the sleight of hand they're using to get shit done, um, and and it's it's fascinating to watch you watch your perspective the, on it. The the way Justin once put it to me is he says I have zero appetite for governance. I could give two shits about governance. Politics, however, is a different animal. Well, because there's, to be totally honest, it's less depressing to me because governance is something that's very depressing because it it's uh, uh, always going to run up against either ideologically or bureaucratically uh, of, you know, a wall, and that'll be that. Now, politics, on the other hand, has a brilliant, beautiful, definable beginning, middle, and end. At a certain point, somebody wins, and they do it because they have run the game better than their opponent, or the wins uh, uh, of, of the, the battlefield have been at their back, and there we go. I can make sense of that. I can't make sense of governance. Do you, do you, uh, I, I can't remember when I came on your show. Did I tell you about some of the tricks that I learned when I was in Congress that they do? Because it really is like you actually do. I, I became amazed by it. Like, um, so this one dude had three coins, right? <laughs> one, two, three. And he Mitch put it McConnell in his hands, has it amazing. You know, he like he has these. Put red it in balls. his pocket, but it was the three coin trick. Nancy it was remarkable. Pelosi's <laughs> mentalism. No, no, no. It's like well, like one of the things I learned. So I, you know, I, I worked for two different congressmen, and I, I would like if I got an elevator with a bunch of just random people, I'd be like, hey, where are you visiting? Oh, we're, we're visiting from. Uh, Arkansas. Oh, okay, who's your congressman? Oh, my congressman's Tom Parkins. Okay, do you like him? And everyone always said the exact same thing. Everyone always says the same thing. You know, Congress is a bunch of crooks. But our guy, Tom Parkins, he is the real deal. And all of the congressmen know this. They mm -hmm. all know that the, the collective body is disdained, but that they can create this situation of 
No, I, I'm just, I'm not a politician. I'm just a regular Joe who like, and it's like, by the way, no other job in America, do you brag about not being qualified or interested in doing it? Like if I came into to your house and be like, I'm not an electrician. I just happen to jack around with electricity all the time. Uh, okay. but, although, although this is, this is shockingly close to the Hollywood version of this. Whatever your pitch is, you're like, oh my God, you just lit up that room. We love you. We think yeah. you're the best. You're yeah. great. It's just, yeah, it's not right time for a show like this. We all love you, though. You're great. The show idea is great. It's going to be a great fit somewhere else. <laughs> the uh, the 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 tricks that I saw that were fascinating. So Leon Panetta, I met him one time when, when he was the head of the CIA, mm -hmm. uh, and he, he uh, and I got to ask him some question. Uh, and what was amazing about him is that he, because again, the goal here, the goal with all the politicians when they meet you is they want you they want you to feel as if they have lifted the veil that they are they're pretending to be a politician, but not with you. They've seen you, and they know you're a good guy, right? So what Leon Panetta does, and it's masterful, is um, when you're talking to him, you'll ask him a question, and he will lean forward and go. He'll, 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 look, he'll look around the room as if checking to see if it's okay. Look at you. You're fine. And he'll go, these fuckers. But he'll say fuckers, right? So that he's communicated like, I'm okay swearing in front of you, Brian, because right. I, I know you're never a cool do guy. This in front of you. I'm uh, going to be transgressive, which yeah. is how you know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, and then yeah. like, like not like not to crap on the guy, but like John McCain had a variant of this when he would give speeches. He'd like somebody ask him a question, he'd give a speech, and then he'd go, look, as if like I was going to do this boilerplate, but I'm going to quit the boilerplate and just tell you how it is. Uh, so one congressman, I won't he's, mention who hold it is. He, he looks at the cards and just like shakes his head, throws no, them over not his shoulder. today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there, was, there was one congressman, um, and what he would do, and this is brilliant. Like, I think you'll love this, Justin. What he would do is he would have his staff assistant come into every meeting 10 minutes before the meeting concluded. And her line was to say, Congressman, I'm sorry, we have to cut the meeting early because you've got x y and z happening later right every meeting this is going to happen 10 minutes early five minutes before then he would go ah yeah you know what hold on a second here in about five minutes my staff assistant's going to come in and she's going to tell me i've got to end the meeting early uh she does this with everyone it's in case i want to get out Just oh this is a double her. fake out yes it's yeah. a you, double you, fake out you you, you, you painted so red they would they they she'd come in and go congressman you, you've, you've got to go and he'd be like okay all right wink wink and they were like oh wow we made it to the inner sanct and he did it with everyone that's and it amazing was brilliant no number one somebody said people buy that shit you buy that shit you <laughs> will buy that shit this is the great worth of a politician uh, uh, and I tell this story all the time. The first time that I really realized what, like, top-level politics was, uh, I think – I'm pretty sure that I had read – I mean, I had already uh, been, you know, gone to high school in the 90s, watched the, the – I, I became interested in politics because of the Lewinsky uh, uh, scandal. <laughs> that was I, how you I, got it? Nice. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, no. No, the second that the Lewinsky scandal happened – and then they published the Star Report in the Sun Sentinel in you're, South you're, Florida. You're like I'm 35. You're like what? 38, 36. You're 36. I'm sorry. You're you're, you're oh you're you're older babies. than me. Okay. Babies, babies. Yeah. So so yeah. So so they published the Star Report in the Sun Sentinel, and I brought it to school because I'm like this shit is wild, right? And I'm like reading about blowjobs in the newspaper, and every teacher is like, oh that's great. You're really like you're 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 like on top of things. Like you're really focusing on stuff. I'm like, they wrote about dick sucking in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best I've ever seen. Like this is, a, and I, I'm uh, I'm getting extra credit because I'm reading about <laughs> blowjobs in the newspaper. The politics are the, 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 the greatest. And then the 2000 election happens right in my backyard, and like uh, I'm like, all right. There's there's no going back. I, I will always be in love with politics. But by the time that this story happens, uh, I've already read a lot about Bill Clinton, about Hillary Clinton. I think I'd already read the the great Christopher Hitchens book, uh, No One Left to Lie to, which spoiler alert, it's about the Clintons, right? A polemic about Bill and Hillary Clinton, yeah. up to and including. I think that was the first big uh, uh, published job. account of the, the the Juanita Broderick. Mm. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Allegation like. That was so like I know everything that's in that book uh, about Bill Clinton and I'm going to cover Hillary Clinton, who was at that point the New York uh, senator at uh, I'm still in school in Syracuse uh, uh, at the New York State Fair, which is in Syracuse. And uh, Bill has a little speech before Hillary does. And then Bill, as apparently he is wont to do, just kind of peels off and 
you know, goes a bunch of press kind of gathers around and he just sort of holds court about like whatever anybody wants to ask him. And he's very, very friendly to everybody, but he understands that I'm the youngest one in the circle and he singles me out first to ask the first question. Oh, that's brilliant. So you immediately find what appears to be the most powerless among everyone and grant him. And I get I get the full beam of like and I don't give a fuck. There's going to be people in here that would be like, fuck him, whatever. And again, I've read this book. I've read a credible allegation of him being a rapist. There is nothing that a that level of political animal that has met. That many people when when the love beam, yeah. it is like a cult leader. There is just something where you're like, yes, thank you. You've understood my humanity. You have allowed me to flourish. I asked some shitty question about the war in Iraq or something, probably. Uh, he answered it thoughtfully and then, uh, 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 you know, made sure that I was happy with the answer and then moved on to the next person. He probably paused, looked down for a second as if to truly think, wow, that one. OK, first is lips. Yeah. Yeah. All of it. No, they're, they're like which is another. It's like like the, uh, politicians do have a superpower like that. Like I don't, I don't I don't meet politicians as much as I used to now that I'm not in D.C. But like I got to the point where like I just like I go in. It's almost like I'm I'm going to be doing. I ha- I have to. This is such a weird. This is a weird, and I don't mean this to sound as vitriolic as it should. But like if yeah. you were doing an exorcism, you know the demon's going to fuck with you. Like you know <laughs> you have to go in knowing that the demon's going to yes. fuck with you. Yeah. So like when I meet politicians, I'm like I go in going I know I'm going to like this person because they're they're professionally likable, and I'm going to leave, and you can pick virtually anybody. And after I meet them, my tune is going to be you know I met with them and I disagree with them. They are a really nice person, which is fine. Which part of the reason I don't like to do character attacks is that I would rather deal with them on a policy level because I can still do that. Right. Well, and and I think part of it is you know a lot of people are tempted to use the word evil, and I think that is the biggest tactical mistake you could possibly make because the moment you call anybody evil anybody who likes that side thinks uh wait i like that person am i evil no i'm not evil this person's full of bullshit and then that's the Mm -hmm. end and you make no progress in changing minds or whatever it's like uh, uh, lean into wrong instead of evil whenever possible so one thing that i heard attributed as an old politician's trick and i i have parroted it i have no idea no memory of where i first heard this but i've said it all the time is that uh, uh what i was told at some point is that to avoid the risk of ever not remembering having met somebody, you walk up and they shake your hand and they say, they say, you know, it's me, so and so, or, 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 you know, I'm so and so, and you say, it's good to see you. Yeah. Specifically, you never say it's good to meet you. It's never good, you know, or, or, or anything like it's just it's good to see you. Yeah. End of discussion. Is yeah. that is that a real thing? I think so. Yeah. Well, I will say, like, like, po- like politicians are skillful at it. Like, I, I find they are very good at names, and and there is like a weird like, like I've, I've I won't go through my my bit in my stand-up thing, but the, the, the bare bones of it is I was thinking like, why am I so bad at remembering names? And I really thought about it and I was like, I think it's cause I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, the operative thing is that when you meet people, it's like you're, it's, it's a, it's a nicety you're exchanging. What's your name, Brian? Okay. I'm moving on with my life. Well, right? yeah, like, wait, wait, they wait. actually do slow it down and go, Brian, and right. then they remember it. So they're, they're, they're better about that. But yeah, I think there's a lot of things like that or they'll, you know, you're, you're like, like, Oh, like now, how, how is your wife doing or whatever? And you, you, you kind of suss it out from them and that kind of thing. Yeah, I should not do what I currently do, which is the moment someone says their name, I shake their hand and say, I will forget that instantly, <laughs> which at the one on the one hand well, is, is very no, honest. But that's, that's but that's the thing. You're an entertainer. That's an entertaining thing that somebody can uh, say yeah. to somebody. You can get a laugh. That'll be a fun moment. They will remember that as an honest and unique time that they got told. I'll never remember the name. And then the next time that they come up, now you're already doing a bit because they can come up and say, hey, I know you don't remember my name. I'm uh, Marge. And you can go, ha ha, I did. (laughs) <laughs> and now we're now now you're even cooler. The second time they come back, they're like, "I know you said you won't remember my name. I'm Marge." And I'm like, "I've already forgotten." <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm now very it's good a double at that. Fit, and we're laughing even harder, right? A politician has to build that trust because this is they're a neighbor. They they they're not the the funny person that kind of comes in and out. They're it, it's a weird kind of equity, and that's like ultimately, yes, I do have a disdain for the. Or like I, I have a disdain for the worship of politicians. I actually like yeah. politicians way more than I like the fans of politicians. You know what? I like, agree with you there too. Like if I saw a like if I saw a parade coming towards me and it was just a bunch of people with hashtags on their shirt, I don't even need to know what the word is. I'm probably not going to enjoy that parade very much. 
But like yeah. if it's afraid of literally anything else, because the hashtag, whatever it is, uh, even if I agree with it, it's probably going to be like kind of irritated and it's all they want to talk about and we're really focused on it. Yeah, they kind of like, a, uh, yeah, the, the sort of feverish leg humping that happens with, with the base of many politicians I find distasteful. I, I've, just, I've, never, I've never understood it. And I've also thought it's like, well, that's like not the most interesting thing about the person that you like so much. Like the most interesting thing about the person that you like so much is they figured out a way to do something that's really hard. Like, like you know, a lot of people downplay like, OK, well, you get elected by lying or you get elected by telling people what they want. It's like, sure, you can reduce it to that. But there's a daily schedule that you have to do right now. 20 people are about to go on stage in Miami in a couple of weeks. And they are all trying to figure out how they will introduce themselves to the nation, either for the millionth time like Joe Biden or for the first time like someone like Marianne Williamson or even somebody who has like a bit of a cult following like Andrew Yang. They are going to try to do their best to put their best foot forward by a communication strategy. Uh, and at the thing they have to sell is them. And more than that, their plan for you. They're your new dad or mom, and if and they want you to agree, or at least be open to agreeing as we go forward. And if they can bash your other possible new dad or mom, then all the better. There, there's a, a friend of mine named Brian Parisi. Uh, he's now a writer on uh, last week or last week tonight with John Oliver. But I, I knew him back in D.C. when uh, we were uh, when I was doing stand up. I, I, he was kind of I think he was about to leave for New York, and I was just starting. But we we did a contest together uh, that he won uh, justifiably. And he had this whole thing about how, like, if people in real life talk like politicians, where it's like, hey, uh, hey, Brian, can you pick me up from the airport? I will always be there for you. I will like it. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you bring me to the airport? You know, that's a great question. What makes great answers is good education. It's like, yeah, can you pick me up from the airport? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you who won't pick you up from the airport, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were talking about the name thing, and I just went on a bit of a journey. Um, I realized like uh, that most of the time when I meet a bunch of people, I uh, here are my thoughts in order. We were talking about not knowing people's names and me doing the cop out entertainer thing, but then I thought about how. Most of the time I meet people who expect me to know who they are, they are at conferences in a different state and totally different environment from where I met them. And I'm like, and I'm like, that's so unfair. But then I thought, but what's great about conferences is oftentimes they have name tags. And I thought, I wish everybody had name tags. And then I had what I thought was a brilliant insight as we build out Modern Rogue HQ and make, make the studio. I was like, you know what? It would be really great if all visitors got a badge that had their name, and then I would always know everybody's name. And then I realized it's exactly what happened when I went to go visit you on set for your show. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, kudos, that's a smart idea. Then you know everybody's name because they're wearing it. Yeah. And they feel I, I felt special getting a badge, and so uh, I, I, I put it on the agenda, buy yeah, a badge well, No, it makes a big difference getting a badge with your picture printed on it versus some guy with a magic marker going, okay, yeah. Brian, we'll put this on your cup. Well, especially if like uh, it makes me want to buy a bunch of like all the same like NFC cards and then have one door that's actually unlocked and like literally any NFC will open it. And then... Hold on, hold on, pause. Because are you literally going to skip over the fact that what you want is a world in which people who walk into your space have a name tag so you can know their name. Yes. And when you walked into that place, when you were asked your name, you wrote Putamus Win. Okay, yes, I wrote the wrong name <laughs> because I was being punk rock. Uh <laughs> Floating on two hours of sleep. Everybody writes bottom is wind when they come in and put on their name tag. I mean, but but, but even then, that that's a talking point at least. Like like it's like, oh my god, that's that's amazing. And you would not say hilarious because it might be his actual name. You just point and say, that's amazing. What's the story on that? That way, if it's actually a family name, bottom is you, you don't look like an ass. Look, man, this is this advice, this jujitsu, this triple black belt shit that I'm getting right now is 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 actually going into practice. <laughs> Boy ob. <sighs> uh, so yeah, uh, man. Oh, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. Yeah. Oh, I was I was just going to ask uh uh like last night you got a send off. Uh almost never have I called you and it went like 
one half a ring and then straight to voicemail. <laughs> but, and, and I thought to myself, I bet he's having a time. Having one on, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't crazy or anything, but it, uh, there's there's a guy at the Blaze named Chad Prather who's a good friend of mine, really funny guy, uh, and, and like we get along really well. We, we it's it might be it might be best that the the relationship with the Blaze didn't work out if for no other reason than the toll on my my liver hanging out with Chad was starting to get a bit much because <laughs> we he ha, he has a segment on his program called Highballs with Heaton where we we draw a card out of a hat and we talk about it and it's like. Uh, are people inherently good or bad? Like they're good, like they're good, like you know, two drinks in conversation. But then we're having a really good conversation, and we'll have like three or four drinks, and then the following week, people like love that chat you had about bluegrass, and I'm like, I was on Chad's show. When did that happen? So, <laughs> so we, we all went out to dinner afterwards, but you know, had like I, I was I was I was squiggly. I took I took an Uber home, but not, I wasn't crazy, but you know, wouldn't have been able to if you'd call me, ah, like, oh, Brian, <laughs> greatest last day ever. <laughs> Justin and I wouldn't know what, uh, and you what would have like, like. And then also like, no, what I would, I also would have been like, get, I would have been like, there's this one girl at work, and now that I'm gone, I think I got a shot. Like, you oh know, no, so, I'm glad. It probably for the best, you know. Yeah, uh, man, I'm so excited for you. It's it's going to be really. Um, oh, one thing we talked about. I, I don't think I'm talking out of school. Like uh, you, you're in a weird spot where it's like if 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 you're somebody who's a fan of something's off and, and you want to support it, just support it blindly, not even knowing what it is, because even you don't know what it yeah. is going to be. No, no, no. But your plan is to not charge until it is a thing. That's right. And and to keep in contact with all of your bosses and say, hey, uh, this color palette, which I, which I gotta which say is like? a really cool fundamental shift to have bosses be my fans oh my gosh that's a neat thing because it's like you know and like like i you know like like it was it was fun working at the blaze i'm glad i did it it was really fun working at reason i'm glad i did it um uh, but it was a different like when i was at reason um i wasn't the, the the people that were fans of me were getting navigated through a variety of different things before it got to me and my salary and that kind of thing right um so yeah no that is a cool game shift and that, yeah that's pretty much it because um i will I, like I like I told Justin, I am not a hundred percent sure I want to keep doing politics. Although I think you have a good point, Justin, that it, it, it this is probably not the time to bow out. But just uh, get just like get to November. Like, not <laughs> yeah. but but that, no, that, all I need is a year and a half out of it. That said, though, no, I don't. I don't know quite. I don't know how it's going to look. Just because I think I need I need to repackage it. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to do a daily show. Oh uh, no no no, uh, no no no! That was that was an insane amount. And, like, and if I'm doing it, and I'm, well, and, 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 and uh, man, again, but, hope, but, but, I, you know, I hope but if I'm, I'm doing not... like if I'm doing like a week long, say like two or three hour podcast, and I'm and i and I need to figure out like okay, am I going to do this with a co-host? Am I going to have a revolving co-host? Am I going to like am I going to do like a variety show? Because like my like one of the strengths is I have a ton of comedian friends. Yep. And uh, and like I could do that, but then I could like throw in George Will. So like I'm not I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out. But yeah, that's pretty much it. People that want to that are interested that like what I'm doing that want to want to encourage me to do it. Jump on. It'll probably be three weeks a month. I don't know. Uh, I won't charge them until I get there. And, right. And then, and then, but you uh, will inform them. Like uh, we, we, we. I think internally we call them voting shares, where yeah. it's like, uh, uh, hey man, everybody gets the show. But if you want yeah. voting shares, and if you want to affect where stuff goes, then guess what? Maybe you should be one of our bosses. Uh, you know, I, I think if I were to, you know, and I am, uh, uh, I, I believe your first patron, so. You know, I feel like Thank I you. hold uh, I hold I hold some weight. Not, uh, I got words for, yeah. for I mean, Chase like it's, Bank. Yeah, I'll, I'll, it's I, too I, to I had system. my I had my PayPal connected, unlike some people who use a credit card. You know, oh yeah, I meant to mention that the, the Patreon credit cards expired a while ago, and it's been telling me that for about a year. All right. So sorry, uh, Ali. <laughs> sorry, Ali Spagnola. <laughs> oh Jesus. Uh, I, I would say, man, just literally, I would I would love it if it was just you, and it was just. The, a Snuffy's Christmas episode whenever you wanted to do it. I would love well, it. Not even were... weekly, because I'll say Snuffy's. Like, I don't know that I could do a Snuffy's Christmas special on a weekly basis. That was a lot, because that's that's a solid half hour of comedy writing. I mean, to be to be totally honest, it's like, if, that, if it was not necessarily in, like, all right, this is all scripted, I'm producing and, and, and writing this whole narrative thing, but, like, take the energy you are putting into... The two monologues. Yeah, the stuff that I <laughs> clearly enjoyed doing the most. Yeah. Yeah, and and either like create like I, I just I always felt like something's off, 
and I was like a part of it because I was part of the boring side where it's like, and now Andrew talks to a person where it's like, <laughs> like there's like this brilliant world, the cinematic universe of fucking amazing shit. And then it's like, and now Justin's opinion about Alexandria Casio Cortez. <laughs> it's like, well, fuck, boo me. I suck. Like, go back to the horse shit. You know, that said that one of the last episodes we did was, was Kim Kardashian running for president. And that was a fun episode. That was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, but but I, I would say, yeah, but take if you could narratively wrap that into a thing and it's like, all right, so let's say take the Kim Kardashian conversation. That was a fun conversation. But like if you had an ad leading into it or some conceit of like, uh, uh, you know, now instead of you just saying, well, this is an interesting a friend I have who has an interesting idea. And it's like, no. Uh, unfortunately, friends, uh, there's been a time rift and somebody's like climbed through and they're going to do their best to explain to us in our 2019 world uh, uh, what is exactly that happened. We can take the exact same interview, but it's, give me the heat and oh, that would have been fun. the heat and justification you know we, of it. We, we well, like something that we didn't wind up doing. And I, I'm, I'm sorry that you, you donated your time and it didn't work out was that we you and I had done a time or we had done a, a quote unquote. Oh, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you about that. Did yeah, that ever no, air? Well, like, well, the, the problem, the problem had nothing to do with the interview portion of it. The, the problem was that uh, and so it's so like I, I think we talked about doing an 80s one. Basically, I, the plan was. Because I, it's if I was going to go on vacation, I was going to have to pre-record yeah, everything. Yeah, you got to bank um, some stuff. What, what I was going to do was I was going to pre-record a bunch of things. I was going to come on and go, "Hey guys, uh, I'm on vacation. I know nobody likes to rebroadcast. However, uh, we're do it's a good one. I promise you're going to enjoy it. This is our broadcast from June 4th, 1982." And it was going to be oh, like the entire great. thing was going to be a flashback episode that clearly we wrote now. And oh, like, no, that's wonderful. So, so just, Justin and I did one where it's like right after Nixon lost the, the election to Kennedy and we're discussing or no, it's right. Right after the Cuban no, Missile no, Crisis. It was, it was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. yeah. And so so we're talking about that. And it is interesting because like like you like you clearly know your stuff there. And like we're kind of like we're comparing and contrasting the candidates. We're really getting into it. But we can kind of play around with it, too, of like, oh, like Nixon's done. Like he's never come about, you know, that kind of thing. And. And also, like I, I wrote ads, like man, I'm sad this one didn't air, Justin. We we didn't record it before I got axed, but uh, the the the, oh, no. the the intro and outro. Uh, but like I was gonna like do a callback to be like, <laughs> uh, the, the the sponsor is gonna be Nick's non segregated diner, and oh, I was geez. gonna be like, why? <laughs> like that's great, like that's terrific, okay, but why are you? We can still we can re-record that episode. Yeah, I might do. I might do because it was just like what? Like I, I wanted I wanted it to be me going like I'm supportive of this, but I don't know why you want to like that seems like a weird thing to put in the title. Like was it previously segregated? Is this like a rebroadcast? Like what are you what are you telling us about your like and, and all of the and I'm reading the ad copy and it's like you know we have great uh, we have great chocolate mousse which is served to people of all colors and I'm like again I don't know why. Yeah, why would you say that? You just, I don't, I just don't say understand. It's a good diner. I don't. Yeah. Uh, sorry, somebody turned off my lights here. Dr. Bird. Yeah. Here we go. What? What? Yeah, sure. What? Huh? My wife is talking to me while I'm on it. Uh, yeah, I, I might do some time travel episodes. In fact, at like one point, and this this isn't going to happen now because the connection was through some, some people at the Blaze, but at one point... Um, there's a guy that is involved with the museum side of the charity associated there who was going to get me in contact with um, the Lincoln Museum in Illinois. And I wanted to, and he's like, oh, I know some Lincoln uh, impersonators. And I was like, oh my God, I want to do an 1862 rebroadcast of something's off of the Andrew Sure, Heaton, sure. Where I'm just talking to President Lincoln. Apparently, like, they take it serious. And there's like a Grant impersonator in the same town who will not talk to you unless you call him President Grant. Wow. And I was like, I want to interview that guy, like, as me. And like, just like talk to them and do that. Like, this is what I, this is what I want. <laughs> like, this is exactly like, just take. And, and the reason why I think you need to do it now is because what you, the gift you have is there's really only take it from me, uh, you know, and you know, because you had to divide it by five. But uh, for all the listeners, you really have a week's worth of political news, even now. Like yes. before, before everybody, like in a month, like you have one week and, and God knows before there was like a president who was literally trying to make news every day by, you know, some act or another, uh, you have the ability to just for those other three weeks, just do the crazy shit. Like just have that be that. And then every once in a while when there is the good meaty, like, oh, okay, well, like the green new deal. 
Yeah. Let's have a conversation about like what this is, and and you can get your pointed uh, uh, opinion across. You can find the justification for hey, let's find a reason to talk about it that is very you. And I think that's like right. Like we're about to get to a point where we're gonna get to two weeks a month. So like, like now's the time to harvest. You did a politics show during the shittiest time to do a politics. <laughs> Which, yeah, when there was nothing you, to thank talk Thank you for about. putting that out, too, because like, that is one of those things where, and I, I learned this back in broadcast news when I was working at Fox Business, that you know we were doing a daily show there as well, and I had to show up in the morning and pitch ideas, and it's like, some days, just nothing really, like, some stuff happened, but it was in Syria, and the audience doesn't care about that. We're not going to talk about Syria today, but we had to go in and be like, uh, really big stuff happened today. Oh, my God. Look at that. He, he held his hand out for a handshake, yeah, you and, can, then like, he, and then he yeah, that, that's, went and uh, smoothed his that's, hair. That's the, the, oh my the God. dirty secret of, of news is you, you can never go in and be like, hey, guys, nothing happened today. Spend time with your family. Like, like read a John Grisham novel. Uh, or, or like, we, you know, nothing happened. So you know what we're going to do is we're going to call in a history professor. We're going to talk about the history of Afghanistan because that'll probably pop up again, right? You, you want to know the context of that? I wonder if you could set up with your audience kind of a code. Where it's like, look, you guys get it. My job is to make everything seem really exciting. Uh, but whenever you hear me use this phrase, that's code oh, for right. none of this matters. Go spend time with your family. <laughs> and uh, and then you're like, uh, 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 jinkies, America. <laughs> this incredible thing happened. And I was like, oh, my jinkies. Now we go to the president. Did you see that a college professor shouted at a veteran? Yes. Wow, this truly is emblematic of... Uh... <laughs> Like a secret word that you only use on those stories. That would be fun. That would be kind of cool. And I like that. Well, and like, like I'm kind of learning this now, too, because you've, you've clearly developed this community here that's got a uh, an energy and a vibrance to it um, during your show, but beyond that as well. That sure. You're, you're interacting with it at a different level than you are with kind of the skim level listeners, right? So. Well, and, and part of it was like right from the beginning, we always referred to them as, as our staff writers. And we sort of set up the expectation like, hey, here are the rules. We get to steal all your best lines, <laughs> always. Yeah. That's uh, if, if you don't want us to say it and not credit you, then don't put it in the chat <laughs> because you're our staff writers. Now, on the one hand, they get to they, they get to know that there are staff writers. On the other hand, we may or may not credit them uh, yeah, uh, ever. That's, that's a good feeling though. Like like I did. I, I, who's that talking to? It might have been you guys. I don't remember. I did. Um, I, I met Shatner one time, but when he came through New York, my buddy was writing. He he writes uh, Jimmy Fela with an A at the end, not Fallon, but Fela. He writes a lot of the jokes for for celebrities coming through Gotham. And, and I was like, please let me come to when Shatner's there. And I got to write some joke. And, like, he said my joke on stage. And I was like, light will shoot out of my body. Right. This yeah. man said something that's, I that's, wrote. That's all you need, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah, that's yeah. all the reward you need. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, chat room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're the best, which is, which is amazing because uh, it's also kind of a, a, a rotating cast. Like, uh, I think that's, that's the most – the, the craziest thing is to go back and watch some of these old episodes that we did and you see like all mostly like old names, right? People that are that have moved on, that have done, you know, found other stuff and everything. But yet there's always for us, it's the same. It, it is. It, it changes so slowly that you can barely notice it. But it's like chat room is here. Chat room has been here for 10 years, whether or not there's a single person from 10 years ago. That is that is uh, uh, still there. It, it, might, it might be Mitsula. Mitsula might be. Okay. Hey, Justin, can I can I pick your brain a bit more? Because you're, sure, yeah. you're, you're you're doing a political show. Sometimes you have guests on, but a lot of the time you're just you're just doing it yourself for you know yeah. fully thirty five minutes of talking before you get into other stuff. Do you like do you outline it in advance? I I, I, I it feels very it feels very fluid. So I don't think you're reading a script because no. it seems very no. natural. And, yeah, and, yeah. And and are you all are you all concerned about energy levels? Because I find. Having someone now, if it's on camera or it's on, uh, by audio, uh, it may not be the same. But if I have someone in studio, the energy level is always much better. Uh, and and I wonder how that is going solo a lot. Uh, that was something that I I started doing, taking Brian's advice. You know, if you want to do something, then you got to be bad at it. And so initially, uh, I was doing the jury show, which was just me trying to do a one mic show because I wanted to get good at it. It's always a skill that I've I've admired. Well, and, and specifically, if I remember correctly, as you kind of called your quest, you were like, it is the hardest thing I can think to try. I'm, yeah. I don't believe I have the ability to do it and I need to learn to become good at it because uh, the ability to sit down, turn on a microphone and, and talk 
for an hour straight is at this point a supernatural skill you might as well ask me to fly so let's get started and see if i can you know eventually get to a place where where and, i'm able to do it at that point you know i was doing it all live like so i would i would be live streaming it so not oh, only good. so you I, couldn't if you screwed up you had to live with it i was just yeah i just had to eat that shit immediately uh now i've i've taken to doing both jury daily and politics offline Mostly because now the new goal is I want the audio version to sound better. I want them to sound uh, uh, like anything that you would hear on NPR or as like a radio kind of thing. And, and, and with that just comes little tweaks and changes and, and kind of managing your energy. So like by the end of it, you want to go back and listen to things again instead of just like once you've done this, when you've like tap danced in front of uh, 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 the internet live. Like when you turn off the off switch, especially if you're like doing a podcast, it's like, and export. Everything is like, you know, any fuck up is part of the juice. And that's why people like it. And, and we are, we are gone, but yeah, no, it, it is, it is a process, uh, a, a process to keep your energy up and uh, just know there's that moment. I'll always tell anybody who tries to do one mic stuff, if you're doing it live, uh, there the biggest lesson you have to learn is the moment of panic when your brain says, "That's it." <laughs> I'm at the end. Yeah, I'm at the end of things we had to say, and you can give yourself little cues and little tidbits on on uh, uh, you know how to how to go forward. But other than that, like you always have to master that panic moment of like, "This sucks," or "I'm done." Like uh, uh, and when you can conquer that, well, that... You know, and and that is a skill set that I, I think I've picked up because when I, when I first started, I just I just I had no idea of like how long can I talk uh, before I'm tapped, and it's like no, it, turn, it turns out it's anywhere from like twenty minutes to an hour and a half depending on the subject. Like I can go for a while, uh, but yeah. like like knowing knowing kind of that tightrope feeling of like like uh, you know I'm I'm going to talk about X today. Like now I'm not I can't ramble indefinitely, but particularly if I've got like you know twenty minutes of prep time to where I can at least figure out where I'm going. I can kind of eyeball it, but, uh, so, which is a nice thing about podcasts too, by the way, cause you don't have to fill a set amount of time. Um, like now I think like if I'm doing a weekly podcast, it's going to be clearly longer than 20 minutes, but at the same time though, yeah. um, you can, you can adjust it in a way that with, with TV, you have to do the same amount all of the time. You are hitting exactly that news hole. And, and that is, that is that every single time that you need to do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say now my prep is I'll have like one for, for all, you know, uh, you know, description and a block. This will be like the thing that I want to talk about. And it's like in good news weeks, which we're not in. So I'll have to come up with something like the Kim Kardashian thing this week. That was uh, great, though. You know, it, it, you know, that that'll be that. And then I'll do kind of like three stories that I just have like. A general thing, or I can kind of reheat a take that'll be like, okay, well, uh, uh, is, you know, I've been making fun of Beto a lot. I've been making fun of de Blasio a lot. Like, this will be like my Beto and de Blasio suck. Like, here, here's an example of why that's happening. Uh, but I don't feel the need for that to be tremendously original. This can be kind of the thing that uh, keeps people there. And then I'll just have all my, like, one-liner takes in this segment the parade of wrong opinions where it'll just be like, I'll just say a thing and I'll be like, ah, like, uh, this person did this thing. And then I'll have, Oh, here I have my sounders. Uh, yeah. where is it? Oh yeah. Here we go. Wrong. Wrong. My, my Dana Carvey yeah. McLaughlin group, uh, thing. So I'll just get all those off. And then at that point it's kind of on rails, the pole dance, you do the, uh, the, the poll of the week. Emails, you're done. But I've kind of, I've, I've segmented it enough now that it's like really the only thing that I need to make sure is like interesting and fun uh, is is that A block. And then other than that, I, I can just kind of uh, rely on the the banter element of it. Hmm. Hey, uh, can I can I share a weird moment that I meant to bring up at the beginning of the show and then totally didn't? Um, <clears throat> I uh. I, uh, over the weekend, um, 
Bonnie was working at the studio and uh, she said, hey, just make sure that Callie gets fed. Uh, great. Awesome. Um, and uh, so so it's one of those rare days that, that truly feels like a summer day. Like the kids are in summer vacation mode, but it's rare that, that I've got nothing on my plate and I get to feel the same way. So it's like, yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm going to goof around uh, and then, you know, take care of the kids. And so around uh, at uh, Saturday at 1240 uh, p.m., I get a text from Bonnie that says, how's Callie? And I, uh, I, I, I peek over the edge and I see uh, Callie, our six-year-old, and Josie, our 11-year-old, and her friends. And uh, over on the left, there's Penelope working on a cosplay thing. She's 15. And, um, and, uh, and uh, they're, they're laughing and dancing and singing to the musical Hamilton. So I, I, you know, I, I respond, uh, they're dancing and singing to Hamilton. It's adorable. And I said, I was just going to go grab lunch for them. Uh, and, and she goes, thanks. Great. And so I go across the street to, uh, uh, the same place where I had the epic run of Hearthstone and, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I try to create the same ritual. So I'm sitting there eating wings at that place and I'm going to grab food for the kids on the way back. But then I get a text message from Bonnie that says, I am still, and then it does thumbs down and then it changes the thumbs down to a ha ha. And I respond with a question mark and she goes, I'm stuck. And I, and I respond stuck like in your car or in your art. And she says, after, she says, yes. And I was like, both. And she goes in my room. And I'm like, ha ha, what? They locked you in the studio. She goes, no. And I was like, do, do you need help? What is happening? And then she says, I'm not stuck. Unemployment. Thumbs down emphasis. And then I say, Sweetheart, are you okay? None of this is making sense. Please tell me if I need to come get you. No. I'm like, no, you're not okay? She goes, I am okay. And I'm like, okay. And that's the end of the discussion. And I come home, and I have uh, food for all the kids. And I say, uh, uh, hey, we got food. Man, I got some weird messages from your mom. And suddenly everything kind of freezes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hear our six-year-old Callie go, oh, yeah. <laughs> about that <laughs> and it turns out she had thought that she had accidentally locked herself in a room because when she was when she was a super young baby we actually we have the locks on the outside of the room by the way i may lock you in that room oh, cool. um but but she thought she had locked herself in the room and uh and was using <laughs> uh body's phone to text me or whatever but i'm just like dang it you got me again it was it was amazing it's hilarious that's hilarious. She's looking for a sequel. Uh, second songwriting credit. Uh, yeah, well, I guess I killed the energy. Sorry. Politics. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> um, Dave Parker, if the Night Attack Double Toasted gig happens in uh, August successfully and makes all the money, is there a chance that South by South Wasted will either not happen this year or done in a different format? Like perhaps a gathering at Modern Rogue HQ, asking for travel planning purposes. Ooh, man! Uh, so as of now, uh, nothing has happened since the last time we talked. Uh, in that, we have not uh, booked anything. Uh, we still have the idea for it. We have the well, at least we did two weeks ago. Have the slot for a, a Sunday thing. Uh, but. As for what we would do for South by So Wasted, uh, that's like three shows that we haven't booked from now. So uh, I don't know. The yeah. uh, chat room is insisting that we wrap it up and play Bikey Wars, uh, as is our traditional reckoning. But I, I'm, I guess I'm we, loving we, the show title suggestions. Yeah, we, there. we totally forgot to do show title. Oh, great. Yeah. Am I British this time? Love that one. Cranking it on your jazz flute. Also great. <laughs> Uh, but it's all fine now with Andrew Heaton. I like the fact that it says Andrew Heaton in the title. Well, it'll have that regardless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we might bomb Mexico is just me stealing a line <laughs> from his sketch. <laughs> is Coast to Coast is that a Coast to Coast AM reference or am I am I missing that? Uh, oh, uh, no, no, no. Well, I mean, I guess yeah, yes, and probably. it's uh, uh, it's it's about the chagrin for whether or not a lake coast is a yeah, coast. Yeah, it's oh, about okay. uh, Bryce's lake. Fucking shit. It's not my <laughs> math, and I trust the math. <laughs> uh, no chant corner hour. This that's is that's tipping the bit. Half of the stuff is just funny shit. I said it's yeah. This no, is look, wonderful. Yeah, it turns out you're a good match for this show. Yeah. <laughs> 
Send us your orphans. <laughs> Everybody's having fun, I guess. <laughs> pry pry and the repaired. Uh, hey, we do this show for money. Uh, he's an angry transplant. <laughs> Um, gotta love that <laughs> amoeba site lysate. lysate. <laughs> oh man, what Wait, else? Can they can they see this as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're uh, <laughs> you're on a tornado eating ham. What is that from? Oh, when I you think were I on a tornado eating I, ham. I, I was making just like 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 explaining the the last minute that would sometimes happen in writing a sketch where I'm like, okay. Uh, right, oh, got it, got it, got it. You would, you would throw the nonsense engine into overdrive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's go see what's at the top here. What are we feeling? Uh, I, I, I like Am I British This Time. Uh, I'm kind of a sucker for But It's All Fine Now. I kind of feel like, but it's all fine now. Is is a uh, is is something, I don't know. something that implies that there's a bit of a rocky. Yeah, story. I mean, I think that's a, it's provocative. You want to listen to like, wait, wait, what's fine now? Nobody knows. It's provocative. Nobody knows. Okay, let's do that. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody who submits show titles using the bang s command in the chat room. Oh. Uh, uh, if we want to do Bikey Wars, you're going to have to give me about 90 seconds. All right, we can give you 90 seconds. Um, <laughs> are you familiar with the uh, Australian sketch comedy group, uh, uh, Auntie Donna? No. Um, we, fi we find them very funny. We find them very Python-esque. Oh, nice. And we were there for the show where a member of Monty Python uh, had notes for them. Yeah. And we yeah. did not like the member of Monty Python's notes. And instead, we're like, no, fuck that guy. You guys are fucking awesome. All right. Wait, yeah, hold on. All right, here. So here's, here's the story. <laughs> we wind up going to a show of theirs in L.A. And uh, we talked to him a little bit, uh, I think, before the show. And they're like, yeah, man, uh, this is in the Largo. And they're like, uh, I think that we're going to have... Uh, this member of Monty Python in the audience. Monty Python is going to be in the audience. And uh, uh, we're like, oh, oh, wow, that's cool. He's like, all right, well, yeah, guys, hang around afterward because there's like this little a bar as that's a part of the venue, and we're going to close it down and have that be our kind of after party. But uh, but but hang out. And so watch the show. The show is hilarious. It's great. And not, and not only hilarious, but like a precision and energy that I haven't experienced for maybe 10 years at this point. You know, it's like, I've seen a few shows, but at this point, like I am so swept into it and they just own that audience. And it was a well-deserved full on, you know, immediate standing ovation for the level of energy and, and, and yeah, just, I mean, just and, and, you know, having worked in sketch comedy, like I have never in my life seen a sketch comedy group that never leaves the stage. Like they literally just, everything is either sketch or like not only just staying on stage but like dancing and doing like everything kind of connects in this funny mr show sort of way but it's like high fucking energy the entire time they are just like always going out of their way uh and so we eventually make our way to this after party and uh all of a sudden we see this legendary comedian uh um who is uh Certainly, the uh, 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 he's he's somebody explaining. Uh, well, you know what they ought to do, and we're watching our friends who just melted the faces right off of, of five hundred people and got a well deserved standing ovation. Well, with a, it's their hero. It's their hero. Their hero yeah, is yeah, yeah. now giving them notes, right? Well, and okay, they're also not good notes, and and we're watching them do their best to. <sighs> You ever you ever see some people run across a Bible passage that is like so? Anyway, Jesus cursed the figs, and you're like, well, that doesn't sound like a Jesus thing to do, but I guess he did. It's here in this book. What do you think that means? <laughs> <laughs> like that's what we just saw is them deconstructing, and all we can do is be all like, fuck that guy. You guys are fucking on. Don't change a goddamn thing. It was fucking great. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, the legend the legend leaves, and then they're like, uh, we're like, oh my god, what is, what what he saying? He explains it, and we're like, oh, yeah, no, fuck, 
fuck that comedy god <laughs> like your god just left and, <laughs> and, then, and then meanwhile they're, they're, they're like they're like well i don't know maybe maybe the figs said something really nasty to jesus that would make sense maybe they said hail satan and that part got left out and that's why you would curse the figs not because he was hungry and the tree wasn't bearing fruit because uh, that would be silly <sighs> dr arby i have no idea what you're talking about what say we watch biking wars I'm a bikey man from a bikey gang Living in my crack den, making crack I love killing, thieving and extortion Give me 20 bucks, I'll give you an abortion I love cocaine And selling it to kids I charge 50 for an ounce And my dad used to fuck me rippity dee My name's Snake from a rival gang So give me the drugs or I'll go bang I'm a real rough bloke I'll murder your wife So give me the drugs or you'll be in strife Oh no, he's got the drop on me But lucky I got a trick up my sleeve Bang! Biggity bang! <laughs> biggity bang bang Biggity biggity bang And a shoot 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 Put a bullet in your head Bing bam boom and he's effing dead Stop right there, I'm a crooked cop Give me a bribe or your drugs will stop If you Oh, you gangsters are such big roughies I'm gonna put you in handcuffies Oh no, it's the boys in blue What the hell am I gonna do? Bang! Biggity bang, a big bang bang Biggity biggity bang And a shoot 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 Put a bullet in your head Bing bam boom and he's effing dead Well hello there, I'm just a passerby And I just Bang! Biggity bang, a big bang bang If we're gonna do one more. Should it be Chuff Dad or should it be Big uh, Bigot and Bill? Oh, uh, 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 wait, we're gonna go. I I I would be tempted to not do another song and do Same Ties. Oh, <laughs> Same Ties is pretty good. Yeah. All right, screw it. All right, last one. All right, for real, for real, <laughs> for real though. This is the last time that we two show people up wearing the same tie at work. Show. Oh, goddamn. Walkie, walkie, walkie. Hello, Rachel. How do you do? I'm good, bro, Dan. Well, that's real good. I'm just walking down the hall. I wish I was dead. Mmm, uh <laughs> what a delicious magaccini. And great with a focaccia. So are you wearing the same tie as me? You are joking! You beauty! You beauty! You are joking! Hey, hey, Susan! Susan, what's this? Look at that! See that one? See this one? Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! What are you two boys gawping and giggling about? Did another pigeon get into the boardroom? Nah, no, mate, have a look. Is anything tying us together? And yes, that pun was intended. Well, have a look. Ooh, um, ooh, mm, gee, I'm not sure. Uh, so, mm, uh, you've been, uh, okay, a bit of spot the difference, all right? Oh, a bit of spot the similarities, are we, Faye? All right. Ooh, um, ooh, mm, gee, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, gee, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Are you two boys wearing the same tie? Everyone! Something mildly interesting has happened in the fucking workplace today. Two people have won the same fucking tie to work, and I'm gonna take a fucking photo on this. 
camera, and I'm gonna get it developed. And I'll fucking came out! Came out! The same toy! Not since that pigeon flew through the window in 95 has such a wonderful thing occurred in this here office. Yes! Come on! You there! Dog boy, what's the meaning of this hullabaloo? You wouldn't believe it, Lord Wigglesnatch. Two men have all the same time in their place of employment. <laughs> Mother of cunts. <laughs> same time, same time, same time, same time, same time, same time. Does anyone have a broom? Two pigeons just got into the boardroom. Holy shit. <laughs> came to pass that the pigeon was let out of the window and order was restored to the office. Plus, I think there's a little Zack along the way. Join us next time as we finger... Two pigeons! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, kill it. Kill the stream. I love you guys. <laughs> See you, Night, oh. everybody. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. This was fun. Oh. Yeah.